This is the Umbrella Academy podcast on TV Podcast Industries. We're here for our season two wrap up and our reveal of the pub pop quiz winner. Where is everybody? Oh, they're gone. They're gone like a fart in the wind. Poof. It's just me and you again. Great. So, where the hell are we? Are hats back? I think the question is, when are we? Welcome back, fellow Academy alumni. It's Derek here from TV Podcast Industries. We're here talking about the Umbrella Academy Season 2. We're going to be discussing all your feedback, wrapping up the show, and we will be revealing our pop pub quiz Winner. I always get that wrong, the wrong way around. But anyway, I am one of your hosts, Derek. Hello there, fellow Brolly Dollies. I am one of your other hosts, John. And rounding out this ac- academic trio, I am Chris. Excellent, excellent. John remembered Brolly Dollies. I didn't think you were going to. <laughs> uh, why not? I was hoping he wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've had a few weeks over at Lovecraft Country in the horrific world of the uh, of the 50s America. Uh, I thought you might have forgotten the the, uh, the lightheartedness that was in uh, Umbrella Academy uh, since we recorded our season two uh, discussions. And hence why I said Brolly Dollies. That's very lighthearted. It is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially in terms of what they call other people in the 1950s. Uh-huh. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It's been a political it, statement. It has been a very <laughs> tough uh, season of Lovecraft Country. Uh, lots of fun. Very different from Umbrella Academy. So we hope that our wonderful listeners to TV Podcast Industries have been able to join us for both of the shows. And um, really scary. It has been very scary. <laughs> where there has been at least three times when we've been watching episodes of that show where John has screamed. Um, <laughs> yes. Cthulhu sending his little baby shoggoths over to Skirmy. Ooh, yes, yes. Yes. Nasty I, Cthulhu. I did not know what those words were, and I just went, hmm, that sound interesting. <laughs> there you go. But we're not here to talk about Lovecraft Country. If you want to hear our thoughts on Lovecraft Country, each episode is going to be released on our main feed on tvpodcastindustries.com, or you can follow us over on dreadfulpodcast.com, our new well, officially our horror podcast uh, section, I suppose. Yeah, because. sci-fi horror. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah general sort of scream fest uh, over on dreadful podcast exactly exactly we're here to talk about uh, umbrella academy today though uh season two our final wrap-up we recorded uh, our discussions about season two we let everybody in on how we recorded these <laughs> we recorded them in sessions over uh, five uh, sessions wasn't it four sessions uh, that we recorded them we did um episode one on its own and then episode two three four five six seven and then after the episodes were released to everybody on Netflix, then we recorded our last uh, our last episodes. So what that meant was, unfortunately, we weren't able to discuss your feedback uh, as we went through the show. We weren't able to get our feedback in from our wonderful Academy alumni. So this episode, the main part of it is going to be your feedback on the show, because we really wanted to hear. We've been reading it all, all along as I've been editing the podcast and putting them out, making sure that we didn't release too much so nobody could follow along with us. I've <laughs> been able to read them. So you did get some great thoughts into us. Uh, but unfortunately, they didn't. We weren't able to record them for the episodes as we recorded. So, uh, will we discuss the feedback of our wonderful Brolly Dollies, John? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there you go. I, I see. No, I'll I say Brolly Dollies. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Let's jump right in. Excellent. As always, if you want to send in any thoughts to us about the show or any thoughts about any of the shows that we cover, you can email us to feedback at tvpodcastindustries.com or pop on over to our group where we discuss all of the shows that, we, uh, that we're that we covering on facebook.com slash groups slash tvpodcastindustries. Yes, but before we jump into feedback, I'd like to thank all of our Patreons who went over to patreon.com slash tvpodcastindustries and dropped us anything from a dollar uh, or above and was able to help us produce this beautiful show that you are listening to now. Mm-hmm. So first up, I'd like to thank Angie, Laura, Lisa, Franca, Cassandra, Jenny V, Alice, Rich, Jessica, Robert, Steve, Amy, Into the Night, a Moonlight podcast, John, 
Oren, Stuart, and of course, Claire. Yes, and Into the Night, a Moonlight podcast, also known as Ray. Yes. Should have put that in there. But Absolutely. it's a good podcast if you want to listen to a Batman ripoff. <gasps> oh, oh my I kid, goodness. I kid, I kid, oh, I kid. I kid. No, oh. he's a great, great, Chris. great comic book character who yeah. is currently beating the hell out of the Avengers. Absolutely. So drop over to the, po- the podcast and listen to all about it there. Moon Knight's not evil, is he? Or is he? Oh, is he? <laughs> or is it Khonshu that's evil? Uh, yes, we're not going to spoil all that. Pop on over to Into the Night, the Moon Knight podcast. Remember, Chris, I made him change his name of his podcast. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Just so you can go, the, the, thou, exactly. how. Yes, echoing Chris's thoughts, yes. Yeah, huge thank you to uh, all of our patrons over on patreon.com. Uh, as particularly our brand new uh, joiners. Uh, we had Lisa, Laura, and Angie who joined us during the time on Umbrella Academy uh, for the ability to get access to those episodes early. Uh, we'll be doing some new stuff later on in the year for everybody over in our Patreon group, but uh, we have lots and lots of podcasts coming out as well. So uh, yeah. I want to say thank you so much for the support. It enabled us to get Chris a brand new microphone as well. Yeah, so you can hear his dulcet tones, his his sexy breath, and of course, his unparalleled singing his own vocal is, is cords if anything this will make your ears bleed more <laughs> yeah. it's Ooh. going to be fantastic <laughs> well hopefully it'll sound even better thanks so much to our patrons for that yeah thanks so much to all the patrons it's really uh, appreciated uh, all your support and of course you can support us in other ways as well uh, through uh, rating us, subscribing to the podcast over on TV Podcast Industries, uh, leave a review, uh, some stars, yeah. uh, some twinkly stars, are, and rate us. Uh, any support is very much appreciated. Absolutely. And of course, sharing the podcast is indeed sharing, sharing the love. The love. Oh, I know. Right, that's it. All the announcements out of the way. Thanks so much again. Uh, we're going to go straight into our feedback for uh, Season 2 of Umbrella Academy. First up, we have an email in from Angie Arhus. Uh, Angie says, Hey guys, love your podcast. I found you during the boys last summer and have been a follower ever since, but this is my first time writing in. I watched Umbrella Academy based on your recommendations during an episode earlier this year and thoroughly enjoyed the show. I appreciate you bringing up some of the differences between the show and the comic book since I haven't read those. My favourite character is Klaus sexy trash who's yours sure hoping Netflix is planning a third season of the show it's just too good thanks Angie right so guys the uh, gauntlet has been thrown down Angie's favourite character is Klaus sexy trash <laughs> I, I can see that for yeah, sure yeah. Um, we, go, we go around the table we go uh, I think we should Chris what's your favourite character in the Umbrella Academy Let's start with you I'm just going to go five Okay. I, I'm taking I'm taking the easy one. Just yeah. fifty year old man in a sixteen year old or twelve year old body. It is hilarious. The power is help, but uh, it's more the uh, the way that Aidan Gallagher actually portrays the character mm-hmm. is fantastic. It's that snarky old "get off my lawn, you darn kids" <laughs> man, but in this child's body. Yes, and it's just that mentality, the the quips, the the overall just delivery. Um, and the this obviously the course the the core central element of him to the story mm-hmm. um is just great so it's a brilliant brilliant character john yeah. how about he, he knocked it out of the park did yeah. aiden gallagher um this season mm-hmm. uh, loved loved him for sure uh, for me i'm going with uh, natural growth um i think in character and also of the the old hair mm-hmm. uh, the locks and that's diego i really warmed to diego this season and yeah. um, it's not that i didn't like him in season one but i really just enjoyed um just how he's so put upon by everyone else but he <laughs> still retains his own confidence in himself um i just thought it was superb Absolutely. of course i wouldn't want to be locked up in a sanatorium but um you know his knife skills are pretty good but i did like him and lila as well i thought that was a great new dynamic uh, to diego yeah. and i, I think yeah. one of my favorite moments was him uh, and ben uh, sort of reuniting as ben is in klaus's body i thought that was really uh, really sweet so yeah diego for me um really liked him you know saving the world with knives uh, what absolutely other way can you do it yeah he's not trying to be a superhero cuz he is a superhero <laughs> <laughs> and he was the only one that had a super- superhero landing as he timey-wimed his way into the 60s. Absolutely, yeah. Very cool. 
Very cool. Uh, this season really has done such a good job with the characters. I think everybody got some great moments. I think the one that got the biggest kind of uh, got the least amount of time, really, it felt like Luther uh, dropped out of the show in a way like he wasn't as central uh, to everything. He was very reactionary this season. Um, unfortunately, I think the first season he probably had a bit too much and this season, a little, a little uh, too little, I suppose. Uh, but I'm actually going to go with Angie and say my favorite character is Klaus. Uh, Klaus is me, basically. <laughs> He's just, he feels like Klaus is all of us at times. Uh, you know, his reaction to everything that's going on around him um, is fantastic. We kind of wish we were as cool as Klaus. We kind of, kind of love the idea that he went back and became a cult leader in the sixties. Um, when, you know, his, uh, his wonderful moment where he, uh, where he goes on his bender and goes to buy every single <laughs> bottle of alcohol in the, in the shop to uh, console himself, uh, when he doesn't hook up with Dave again. Um, you know, I, I think there's something that I love about Robert Sheen's portrayal of the character in oh, the yeah. show that his lines are, the equal, definitely, of uh, of Five's lines throughout the show. I think every episode he has something that he says that stands out. I th- actually think my favorite line from the entire season comes from Klaus, which is right at the end of the season when he talks to Diego and goes, there's one thing I have to tell you before you die. You look exactly like Antonio Banderas. I just couldn't keep it <laughs> in anymore. Uh, fantastic line. Fantastic moment. Uh, just such a great character. I love him. Absolutely. Klaus is pretty awesome. I think yeah. he imbues that free spirit even though he's racked by sort of his own inner demons he kind of imbues that free spirit yep. that uh you want to you would want from the 60s and being the leader of a peaceful cult exactly exactly he was there the longest as well of all the characters wasn't he, he was there for three over three years so uh, has the most experience of this yeah and i think it helps that he had because he's a great character on his own but also having the extra dimension of ben mm-hmm. sort of flirting in and out with Absolutely. him um is is really good <laughs> flirting in and out like that <laughs> i think you meant flirting but flirting no flirting i meant flirting in and out <laughs> excellent excellent thanks so much once again angie for the feedback that's really good to uh, really good to get your thoughts in hopefully you'll email us uh, as we are going into the boys season two hopefully you'll uh, you'll get to email us during that show with your thoughts on uh, on each of the episodes as well yeah thanks so much angie yes thank you angie we also got a bit of feedback from sarah who, with her answers to the Pope quiz, um, she had this to say. I agree with John that the Sparrow Academy Woo-hoo! is in the same timeline as the Umbrella Academy. I think that Hargreave seeing his future failures pushed him to choose a different team. The reason we still see Ben is that he was not, quote-unquote, seen by Hargreaves and would still be chosen for his powers. Ooh, I like that. I do like that. Yeah, it does nice. make sense when yeah. you think that he saw how, how much of a mess... The Umbrella Academy, the, the, <laughs> yes. the OG team made, yeah. and he was not blown away by their powers in the Lu, uh, the Luau kind of bar, the Tiki bar, tiki bar that they went it. to. Yeah. We don't have tiki bars in Ireland. I was trying to think of the name of it. I was going, <laughs> Luau, barbecue, no, <laughs> tiki, That's there it. you go. <laughs> um, yeah, he wasn't blown away by their powers mm-hmm. uh, at all, so he's kind of, and when you think about that, what we'll probably find is that the floating gelatinous cube is like 10 times more powerful than any of the other they'll yeah. all be souped up yeah and the horror ben is from what we've seen of his abilities to a degree he was the most dangerous out yeah. of the whole team yeah if we think back season one in the bank job like they throw him into That's the room <laughs> and he just suddenly gets he comes out covered in blood yes and all those bank uh, or those bank robbers are eviscerated in a splattering of painting the walls red. Yeah, yeah, definitely the most powerful of the original uh, Umbrella Academy. Of course, Vanya, nobody knew her powers, so she's probably still yes, the most so powerful. Far, sorry, yes. But but you're right, in that in that moment with uh, Hargreaves, he sees the powers of all of them, including Vanya. Uh, the only person he doesn't see is Ben. That's a really good catch, Sarah. Yeah, absolutely. Like and even with not seeing that, just the, the funeral um of of ben's death Mm -hmm. you see that he seems to take that really badly so even though he doesn't know about that you kind of get the sense in his death and how he treats then the the remaining members of the academy that um you know he's he's pretty cheesed off that they allowed this to happen uh it's almost like he you know his his eulogy is almost saying um ben was the best of you um for sure and you've really screwed up 
So I really like that, Sarah. Yeah, thanks uh, for that. Yep, good catch. Our next email comes in from one of our wonderful friends of the show, James Jimbo Oren. Uh, he says... Hey guys, hopefully I managed to catch up with the end of the season in time for your feedback episode as this was a cracking series. And once again, I'm so glad you have covered it and gave me the chance to get a bit deeper into these characters. I haven't managed to listen to the last few podcasts yet, but we'll try and binge them over the coming weekend as well as we rewatch some clips for the quiz. Mm -hmm. Yes. Just a few favorite moments to mention this time round in a bit of a jumbled order after watching these episodes back to back, that you look like Antonio Banderas line stands out as a series highlight and confirmed Klaus as one of my all time top five TV characters. Hard agree, James. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, Vanya going all dark Phoenix while floating outside the barn. In fact, now I think about it, the whole suppressed memories storyline is a bit similar to that particular saga, mm, but I do true. hope we get a new type of non apocalypse storyline next time so good catch yeah I like the whole dark phoenix and yeah definitely Did not think about it actually mm-hmm. even if when we think of the fbi building and her floating out that and the the white explosion definitely dark phoenix Very dark phoenix. Yeah. um yeah no good catch uh suppressed memories yeah it's a bit it is a bit similar to that in particular that it was it depends on which Dark Phoenix we're going for, if we're going for the latest film, Suppressed Memories, or the actual original, where, or even, say, the Josh Whedon Suppressed Memories. Anyway, there's lots of different takes on the, the Jean Grey Phoenix saga. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, the film adaptation, the latest film adaptation version was uh, less... Uh, correct. <laughs> I have not seen it. I must admit <laughs> yes, it. okay, that, will show, uh, that shows most people. Uh, but yeah, good catch. Definitely good catch. Yeah. The apocalypse bit, uh, a new type of non-apocalypse storyline. Uh, Derek says it since the beginning. Uh, I'm, the whole thing about the Umbrella Academy is every... It's a consistent ratcheting of the, the stakes. It's every time is an apocalypse. Yeah. They cause apocalypse inadvertently yeah uh, or they at least stop apocalypses like the whole thing is when you're introducing them you see them at the eiffel tower in the comic books and they're stopping in the apocalypse yeah exactly it seems like you know the the way they get called out is like firemen get called out to put out fires umbrella academy get called out to put out apocalypses <laughs> absolutely yes, that, that does seem to be the one the one big thing that definitely we said during the during the show the one big thing that's really different from the comic books to the tv show is this time travel element commission that side of things the people that rule the timeline and trying to get it back to a certain timeline that's certainly not as prevalent in the storylines of the comic books they do feature there are definitely arcs that include them but they're not as central as the umbrella academy are uh, to the the way they've done it in the show uh, the two parts seem to be work side by side in the show uh, it, it kind of you have the umbrella academy you have the commission whereas in the comic books that's not always there that's only in there for a few of the arcs really so uh, so i'd expect that that won't form part if there is a season three i would expect that they won't form as much part now that that kind of storyline shut down after these two seasons, it feels like. So uh, while, it, is it? while it may not be Apocalypse, it may be New Umbrella Academy versus Old Umbrella Academy yes. to, to attain their old status, maybe. Yeah. Or the New Umbrella Academy causes the Apocalypse and the Old Umbrella Academy <laughs> must stop. Yeah. Yes. Causing and Hargreaves the sees their worth. Maybe. Okay, yeah, yeah possibly. Yeah. Uh, James continues, the final showdown worked really well with everyone getting a moment, especially Alison getting to do some fighting, and I loved her winter battle cape outfit. You just don't see enough of those these days. It's brilliant. Yeah, yeah. really good. Yeah. Leela was also a lot of fun too, but I didn't quite follow what happened to her in the final episode. Did she go back to the commission? On that note, I loved everything else that took place in the commission especially the training video, and of course, Herve. What a great supporting character. And I want, Nate, demand a backstory for AJ the Goldfish. <laughs> I also loved Chris's theory that the team could end up running the new commission one day, like Angel Season 5. Nice, yeah. Yeah, as, oh, yeah. as for the handler and the Swede, well, I would be surprised if it is the last we see of them, given what has happened so far in uh, the show. 
The time travel storyline and humor in general reminded me a lot of DC's Legends of Tomorrow. I'm not sure if you guys are as into the Arrowverse, although I have a feeling you covered Constantine back in the day, and I've enjoyed the last few seasons since he became a regular. Overall, this season really did manage to keep getting better, and in this track, here's to the Sparrows and Season 3. Looking forward to catching up in The Boys. Jimbo. Yeah, thanks so much, uh, Jimbo, for for that feedback. Um, I think with Leela, she probably could have gone back to the commission for sure, but she certainly jumped away from that. Um, we don't see where she's gone yeah. uh, in the final episode, but it, it's all around... Um, I think for me, that, that moment, it, it feels like it's all around whether she is truly understanding what her stepmom the handler had had done to her or mm. not because of the rewind done by number five in that moment yeah. does she grasp the uh the gravity of what she's done or was that lost in the second time round? and she's still blaming um the the academy mm-hmm. uh so yeah yeah really um uh, really good little uh, bit of uh, fun as well with Leela through this. Um, and I liked how she tic-tacked with Diego. I liked that kind of, you know, slightly tense, slightly off-kilter love story between them uh, as well. You know, two oddballs effectively kind of coming together uh, really nicely. So, yeah. um, but will that love endure in season three? Mm, maybe. Mm. It's true. Um we can be pretty sure she didn't go back to the commission because Herb and the new commission uh, come back to sort it out with the Umbrella Academy. Yeah, yeah, that's so true. She has kind of gone rogue, if you want to call it that. She's gone to Soul Search. Um, gone to. She has a time travel device, so she's gone into the timey wimey, wibbly wobbly, yeah. uh, to find herself. And hopefully um, we will see her again in season three, because what a character. We will. Yeah. We will. We have to. She is out of the timeline, so the impact to the timeline will not have affected her. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the thing. It's that trying to remember which characters have been been pulled out of the timeline, if you want to call it, by the commission that are interacting with the different elements mm-hmm. versus those who were are now in the alternate 2020. Exactly. exactly. Um or 2019? 2019. 2019, they went back to, yeah, yes. that's right. That's right. Um, one thing we never mentioned throughout the entire show, and uh, thanks, for James, for pointing this out, Herb, uh, such a wonderful character. I know, Chris, you were saying that you know him from a couple of good other roles that he's been in, but one thing that we didn't point out about the actor who plays Herb, he also played Pogo in season one. Um, so he was the model for Pogo. Uh, he was that, That's what he was doing most of the time when he wasn't on screen. So they brought him back for season two in a much more expanded role for Herb, but... Uh, probably because he wasn't doing the CGI for uh, for Pogo. Which one was doing AJ the goldfish, I wonder? I have no idea. I think it was just a goldfish. I would say I, re- <laughs> I would say it could be um, Klaus. I think they went down to the circus doing, and, yeah. just, and just found a smoking goldfish and put him into a, a, gold, a goldfish bowl. <laughs> it's true. Back. It's like I've had, I don't know how many times I've had to get my goldfish off crack cocaine. <laughs> those guys just like, they, they smoke, they drink. They love those flakes. <laughs> <laughs> they really do. Absolutely. Really do. I mean, I would really like to see a backstory for AJ Carmichael, to mm-hmm. be honest, because I just can imagine it would just be crazy weird. Um, and I think that would be quite good. Yeah. I think it would just start out with him spelling out words in his goldfish bowl, and then somebody realizes the potential of this goldfish and builds him a body. You know, <laughs> that's kind of the way. So, well, like that's that. true. Yeah. Is it a human that's become a fish, mm. or a fish that's been put that's into sensuous. a goldfish bowl attached? To a human. Very good. Interesting. I just want it's going to be that, like, all goldfish are actually this level of smart. Yeah. It's just, in ter- and it's just like, do you remember Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy? Uh huh. Where it's like the dolphins fly off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and it's basically they've had enough, and it's that kind of thing. They've always been super intelligent. Absolutely. And they're just like, no, we've had it, we've had enough. It's going to be the same with goldfish. Absolutely. It was basically AJ Carmichael, all goldfish are super, and he's just like, no, I've had enough. I'm not, I, no longer will we be flushed down toilets. There you go. And he rises up. Uh, yeah. <laughs> there is also Klaus the goldfish in uh, in American Dad, isn't there? The talking goldfish yes. in American Dad? So, yeah. But he, he was a German Nazi who got turned into a goldfish. He was or a Nazi. his brain transplanted. <laughs> That's right. So I maybe know that way too much about TV. <laughs> 
That's why you're here, Chris. That's why you're here. Yes. Um, finally, James, uh, you mentioned about DC's Legends of Tomorrow. Um, I absolutely do love uh, Constantine. I think um, I think Matt Ryan does such a great job as Constantine. I'm not a fan of uh, of Legends of Tomorrow. I can dip in and out of episodes probably more than I can with most of the Arabic shows. That is an understatement, in fairness. I you do take like, every yeah. opportunity to uh, knock the Arrow first. Yeah, absolutely. But I do think <laughs> Legends of Tomorrow is the one that you can kind of dip in and watch an episode definitely. of. Um, but yeah. I definitely the addition of Matt Ryan uh, kind of leveled up the show for me. Uh, I do yeah. like his Constantine. It's I can dip really into good. Flash as well. Yeah. For me personally, the Arrowverse, I was hooked in the first few when they introduced the Flash. I got that. It became too procedural. Uh, villain of the week on yeah. most of the shows. Yeah. And unfortunately, because of CW, they're 22 episodes, yeah. more sometimes. Uh, you've got that break. In Ireland, we don't, we have, it comes very late to the European shores. Um, so we don't get access to it. So typically, unfortunately, as the seasons got bigger and they grew more followings and Crisis on Infinite Earth and all those things started happening, all the big moments got spoiled mm. um, through the internet. Yeah. So I knew well in advance what was happening, who was who, what was the, the big twist, just because... Twitter, yeah. internet, yeah. comicbook.com, the usual. So if I could, if I was in the United States or Canada and was able to watch this uh, along with everyone else, I could say I probably would. It would be mm -hmm. a nice kind of Tuesday evening, sit down, let's watch The Flash and tweet along. But like if I'm watching it and tweeting about it, 12 months later yeah. it's just like yeah no everyone's like oh, okay yeah we'll it, it, it's the it real problem when it's late um and it is kind of weird because i just think of when what was it endgame uh got released um outside of america first and there was all these threats that if we get spoiled by this um you're going to be banned from reddit twitter or whatever all these yeah. uh groups um uh, it was like, you do this all the time to us, where anything that's at least a month late. Um, or the day late. Or a day late, day late, exactly, late. yeah. She's tenant as yeah. people are, are gagging to spoil tenant for everybody uh, at the moment. Oh, God, uh, yeah. I, 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 I'm not going to get to see it for at least another seven days, yeah. and I've tried, I've, I muted everything I could think <laughs> of in relation to tenant. And I still was spoiled. Well, that's why, Chris, because uh, Tennant is uh, is David Tennant, the actor from Good Omens and Doctor Who. Tennant is the movie from Christopher Nolan. So <laughs> maybe if you uh, maybe if you blocked Tennant, uh, you might not have been well, spoiled. Well, that could have been why. Yeah, that's what we said. <laughs> and we've been really good that we haven't spoiled you either because we saw it yesterday and it's awesome. Uh, we haven't spoiled you either, so we're, we're no, you haven't. <laughs> and I appreciate that. If only more people were like you. There you go. There you go. Ah. That's it for our emails over on Facebook. Uh, we got another bunch of messages from our wonderful listeners as well. Uh, Doug Green has a point to chat about, guys. Doug says, here's a question I'd love to hear you guys discuss. Do you think anyone in the Academy knows or knew that Reggie is, was an alien? So I'm going to jump in here. Mm -hmm. What, Doug, what do you define as the Academy? Because Pogo, is he a member of the Academy? Hmm. Mum, is she a member of the Academy? I would define it as anybody that has the umbrella tattoo. So then, okay. Well, we don't know if to Pogo's tattooed because he's covered in hair. He could have been shaved or tattooed. <laughs> so I'm going to define <laughs> that as... That's a stretch, Chris. That's, yeah, <laughs> there you go. Uh, okay, so uh, Pogo and Mum. Mum is built by Reggie, so yes, definitely. Uh, Pogo, I'm assuming yes. Because he, over time, has he has spent years and years and years with Reggie mm -hmm. uh, and his plans and has been deep in there. So, Pogo, yes. Pogo knows. The rest of the children, mm -hmm. no. Okay. Yeah. They do not. Uh, because they, if they did, if any of them knew, they would be slightly closer to the Fireflies, yeah. for example. They'd understand what the Fireflies are. Um, I'm going to say no, they don't, because uh, any relations to um, his backstory in season two, mm -hmm. they probably would have known more. Like, for example, if they knew he was an alien, they could have probably go, oh, let's go see what he did in NASA. Or, oh, he's a reptilian. He likes underground heating. 
<laughs> and a big sun lamp. Let's go find a sun lamp. Uh, like, is anybody ordering a lot of flies for dinner? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah like a chameleon, does the tongue shoots across the academy and gets a fly off the window. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I think the only people that know that he's an alien are, uh, well, the Majestic 12. And I don't think they know any more because their brains are splattered across the walls. Uh, well, exactly. The place that they met. So, uh, yeah, I think, I think that's it. What do you think, John? Anybody? I, uh, I yeah? kind of agree with Chris here. I mm. kind of have this feeling that Pogo does because that relationship seems pr- like just young Pogo with Reggie in this season. It, mm. it seemed like Reggie Hargreaves actually likes Pogo more than the the members yeah. of the Academy. Yeah. Uh, so I feel like he would kind of let Pogo know. Um, whether he's programmed uh his android wife to know i don't know mm. but certainly i don't think the um academy know and i don't even get the feeling that any of them have a suspicion towards their father yeah. the main kind of conversation of the academy to uh Ret Sereji is that really he's a pretty bad father yeah. and has been to them and it's that's just, what they yeah. focus on not that he potentially has left, um, you know, a, a bit of skin shed uh, somewhere in, yeah. in the kitchen. Yeah, he's just an awful human, isn't he? He's awful, just completely inhuman, this man. I can't believe he doesn't treat us like a normal, average, everyday human father. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. He's is he not so human? He's so cold-hearted. <laughs> exactly. Like blooded. He's just... Oh, wait, he is cold-blooded. Or, or that he oh, farms oh, gerbils and hamsters, you know, uh, <laughs> down somewhere in one of the basements. Maybe Time. there is another room where there is a gerbil farm for mm. his uh, sort of V-like pleasure. That's exactly what I was thinking. I'd love to see Umbrella Academy versus V in the next season <laughs> as the oh, planet, a planet for, for, uh, full of uh, of visitors arrive uh, to find Reginald Hargreaves uh, who's escaped or something. That'd be cool. Um, <laughs> he would, he would love Peru where he could get a uh, guinea pig. Oh, Yummy. Nice, John. Nice bit of uh, facts there. <laughs> Thanks so much, Doug. Always good to bring a bit of discussion to us. Chris, do you want to take the next bit of feedback? Yes, we have a bit of feedback from Jeff Childs, who says, My assumption has been that the scene at the end of season one where Sir Reggie leaves his partner takes place on an alien planet. But now I question that. One, we know Sir Reginald is a lizard creature. I could understand that he might be wearing a human suit in preparation for his troop, but why would the dying woman be wearing a human suit? Two, he releases the magic fireflies there. Do they travel through space to Earth? Why wouldn't he wait to release them once he arrives on Earth? Mm. So, Jeff, yeah. these are two really good yeah, questions. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I am exactly there with you on this because it wasn't until the Fireflies turn up in Season 2 and show that they were part of... uh, They were in Vanya, yeah. for example. They has something to do with their powers. Uh, I was a bit like, hmm. So there is this whole... Could they have, could that actually be Earth? And this was them leaving. This is the aliens, the ancient aliens, the, the lizard people going, Earth is screwed. We're out. Mm. Bye bye. So this is them all. They, they, to blend in with the humans that are already on Earth, they are with. They basically, this Victorian era, if you want to call it that, based on the kind of steampunk esque. And kind of attire and the lights and things like that. Mm-hmm. They leave at that point. They're like, you know, peace out. We're out. Uh, and he stays. He re- he remains because he doesn't want to leave his dying dead wife. Yeah, so an he interesting remains idea. there. Yeah. So it's actually the uh, reverse is what you're saying is that they're leaving Earth in yes. this moment, uh, rather than leaving alien, an alien planet. Interesting. Um, yeah. but then it's still why do they hide their true form? To blend in with the humans. Yeah, like so that. they were already on Earth. Oh, okay. So they are a different species already on Earth yeah. rather than yeah. it being their home world. So, like, well, I mean, I was thinking, like, back back in time, yeah. sort of, um, I almost like say to the dinosaurs, like, this is how the dinosaurs have evolved in some way, possibly. This could be it. This could be the dinosaurs piecing out. Yeah. Like, this, they, they may be human, they may be Earth bound terrestrials, yeah. like, rather than extraterrestrials. So they are there and they're like, nope, like, okay, you, you mammals are destroying our planet. We're out. Mm, yeah. And this is them leaving, but to blend in better with the, the, the sapiens, they basically wear these skins. I like yeah. that, Chris. I like that. I, I do, never actually. ever thought about that. I thought actually that 
the way it was filmed in season one, it was supposed to tell you this is an alien planet that you're on. And then they may have kind of adjusted that in season two and kind of gone, oh, yeah. maybe we can't do it. But I, I think that actually could work if it was. Because then the yeah. fireflies have always just been in the atmosphere, right? They've been there. But we also don't know too much about the fireflies. It obviously gives them their power, but in him releasing them, mm-hmm. it could be that they are across the universe. So that, like, it, it's it, it's like yeah. um, it, it's throughout the universe these kind of forces, yeah. um, or that they you know, dare I say it, a bit like uh, a homing pigeon. They they kind of home back to Sir Reggie uh, once he's found his final destination if this were to be an alien planet that we see in season one so Mm. it's like that yeah for me i just need i don't know enough about these fireflies obviously except that they help create the 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 superpowers that we see in these children yeah um through sort of entering into their body absolutely i think i think the way we all took it in season one that this was kind of they release the fireflies and that gives him his destination and then he gets on his ship and they goes to earth kind of thing but you're right why would there be nine ships or ten ships leaving the planet then because the only alien that we know of is sir reggie we know now after season two that he didn't spend any time with other aliens he spent time with this majestic 12 so he wasn't going to Earth to hang out with all the other people that left from the planet he was leaving. I think we all were thinking of like Krypton from Superman, that they're all yeah. escaping their planet before destruction. And I think you pointed out, Chris, somebody on Reddit, because uh, you know how the internet is. Somebody did pause the Firefly scene and counted that there were 42 Fireflies yeah. or 43 Fireflies. And that's there are 43 of these special people on Earth, uh, just yeah. like the Umbrella Academy. So how would they release them on a different planet exactly to jeff's question why would they release them on a planet in another side of the universe and all 43 of them land on earth it makes so much more sense that all of them were released on earth and just went to every corner of the globe yeah he's essentially they, they there's something on the moon we know that there's a, a, a he's been building them to stop apocalypses mm-hmm. um that something bad is coming so you can almost think of that he is like on guard duty and this is his, he is basically the last bastion on Earth yeah. of their home planet while they go explore the stars. It's like, okay, keep Earth safe while we go do our thing. Or, or like, you need to just protect this. And he just, they activate the fireflies, if you will. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there you go. Cool. That's what I think. Continuing on, Jeff also says, I really like this season. I think it was better than season one. There was good character growth for Diego and Allison. Luther feels like he's giving up. Klaus is still Klaus. Ben got more to do. And Five is still the smartest of the bunch. But then he's still a, old, a lot older than them. It's also so easy to forget that Aiden Gallagher is only 16. Is he just an old soul or that good of an actor? For me, Vanya was the weak link. I get the gag that she is always a bringer of the apocalypse. It would be funny in season three if everyone looks at her and she's like, it's not me this time. <laughs> I'm looking forward to season three and the story behind the Spyro Academy. Yes, thank you so much, Jeff. Um, yeah, I'm right there with you. Aiden got her. I've, we've been saying it since the, the, since the beginning. Yep. Kind of, he still is the, the, the standout character and I love Klaus. I like, I love the actor Klaus who play, portrays Klaus. I love everything about mm-hmm. him. I love um, Luther and the whole lot of them, but yeah, five is the standard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we'll highlight again, go watch Misfits if you're missing Robert Chee and go watch Misfits if you've never seen it before. He's awesome on that. Or just go seek out some of the interviews he's been doing for Umbrella Academy. <laughs> Absolutely. Because he really is still channeling Klaus uh, with Definitely. all the interviews he's been doing. He's having a lot of fun. So. Yeah, I um, completely agree, Jeff. I think, uh, like, I love season one, but I think season two, they just took it to that other level um and i think you know actually i really like luther in this season uh in that he's given up you know he was this go-getter in season one you know kind of like the college uh quarterback jock which um is as far from me as possible so <laughs> i kind of kind of like uh that with everything that's happened to him he's it's almost like he's just he's pulling back he, he's moving away from that uh, and I, I liked how he connected in with Diego. I liked how he connected in with the the guy in the TV shop as well. You know, he's real down on his look. And I, I like the contrast from season one with yeah. Luther. I thought yeah. it was really good. Um, and yeah, uh, Gallagher, Aiden Gallagher, amazing. Um, yeah. 
I think there must be a bit of old soul uh, in him there. Uh, okay. to, certainly, he's got the kind of slightly bent back and sort of bow-legged legs down for someone who's really had the, um, you know, 58 years worth of gravity bearing down on their skeleton. So uh, really, really good. Yeah, Absolutely, absolutely. Somebody pointed out on uh, another podcast that I listened to that um, just as an allusion to the comic books, uh, Luther eats in every scene that's in it because in the comic books he he actually does grow a beast. Uh, after he has the operation <laughs> in the comic books, he grows obese. He's just constantly eating, and, and everybody comments on his weight problem, effectively. So in the show, that's why you have him constantly just shoving food into his face. <laughs> uh, very nice, very nice. Thanks so much for your feedback, Jeff. I know Jeff left us loads of feedback throughout the season. Uh, as we said, we're kind of wrapping up everything into this episode. Uh, also, Dr. Bob Phillips left us loads of feedback throughout the season. John, do you want to give us uh, some feedback from Bob? Yeah, uh, Dr. Bob's been really great sharing his thoughts throughout the season on... Uh, um, our Facebook group, um, the post there, uh, and but just going in to take Bob's episode nine and ten feedback on episode nine, he begins. Well, that went in slightly unexpected ways. Didn't see Ben saving the universe, or Chris Jones getting a prediction correct, <laughs> or <laughs> the, <laughs> or the handler being so into sashimi. Uh, really enjoyed the Ben storyline, the slow growth of his ghost powers to his intimate end was perfectly lovely. Mm -hmm. Uh, The dissolution I'm guessing is final until season three. Mm -hmm. So uh, is episode 10 going to be another doomsday or the beginnings of interspecies war on episode 10? He says, anyone else get end of Witcher Yennefer apocalypse vibe when the white violin took out the attacking horde Ooh, um, nice. mirror superpower what a brilliant twist and I should have spotted that in the five Leela fight in the warehouse why she was so good mm-hmm. uh, in combating number five Chekhov's few seconds came back nicely and the idea of a slightly misshapen timeline Cuban terrorists, anyone leading to a sparrow, not an umbrella, was a grand place to either end or launch uh, the Umbrella Academy. So, yeah, um, thanks, Bob. I am with you on much of of this for sure. I loved uh, Ben's real hero moment and just that, as you say, that intimacy of that hero moment with Vanya. was so really much. so well done and also just because he he had you know he had connected him with diego and had kind of got one up on klaus as well to be able to sort of get into his body and and experience the the soil through the toes and stuff like that i thought that was really really nice that idea that someone who's died just wants to kind of touch feel uh and all of that i thought that was played really so uh nicely um, yeah. and i think ben Hopefully, as you're saying in episode 10, with the Sparrow Academy, um, if Ben is kind of their leader here, even though he's got a scar, so whether we're to believe a bit like with, you know, the moustache on someone that's evil, Ben, um, (laughs) then I think uh, that will be really good to have him still in the show. Yeah. Yeah, even though... Uh, in in this timeline, he has uh, dissolved away uh, because of saving uh, the the universe. Yeah, that's just different, Ben. But if they can convince him, he can rejoin the Umbrella Academy as a live Ben, maybe in uh, by the end of season three. Chris, you got a prediction, right? I know. <laughs> Who knew? Shocking. Huh? I, honestly, even I, th- I believe there's kind of that age old kind of adage: um, throw enough shit at the wall, some of it's going to stick. That's the one. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, and uh, yeah. Who knew? Uh, I got one. Yeah, I love it. I love 500 it. episodes. You know, they're, they're, a broken clock is correct. Twice a day. There you go. There you go. I think you've had one or two. Other I think ones you have as well. Yeah. But this is a pretty yeah. good one. Yeah, pretty good one. Thanks so much for your feedback, Dr. Bob. Uh, Donald Dennis also shares his thoughts on the finale. He says, I'm watching The Adjustment Bureau, a movie with Matt Damon at the moment. As far as I am into the show, uh, the Bureau from The Adjustment Bureau looks like it could be the agency that Five was the assassin for. Seems very similar. They jump in and out through time in that, that, is in true. that movie as well. It's yeah. a while since I've seen The Adjustment Bureau, mm-hmm. but that kind of my recollection of it is yes that it seems the commission and the adjustment bureau uh, are pretty similar yeah yeah 
Donald continues, uh, also, as you mentioned, that all the other agents were horrible shots. I don't imagine that all of their agents were assassins. I mean, yeah, they had the basic point weapon in other direction training, uh, but but they could be investigators, manipulators, or cleaners. I love that the training is point the weapon away from your face and pull trigger. Um, <laughs> you know, that, that maybe could explain it, but I was expecting that there would be a lot more, you know, bullets hitting in arms occasionally, because a lot of them are assassins. You know? <laughs> we, we know that. Uh, Donald says, also... One of my friends said Hazel and Chacha were in the big final showdown, but I didn't see them. Did you guys? Um, Are their masks sometimes soft and sometimes hard like steel? Sometimes they fold and sometimes they clink. Um, That's kind of a reference in there. I think in the episode itself, what we see is a bunch of people in similar masks to Hazel Hazel and Chacha. Uh, Hazel and Chacha in the the comics and the show use those masks to protect their identity as they went through time, uh, kind of leaving behind. There's no way that people would be able to identify that it's the same people because they just go, oh, they're wearing masks. That's that covering their identity. So other people in the uh, commission also wear these masks to cover their uh, their identities as they travel through time but I, d- I didn't see specifically hazel and chacha there may have been masks that look like theirs i certainly didn't see the actors uh in there personally yeah i didn't see the actors i saw masks yeah. they were yeah. different masks yeah. they were like different characters versus the bunny and the bear mm-hmm. um but yeah no they it as you said that's exactly why they they do wear what they wear. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I, I, I didn't see them uh, either. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think uh, I probably have just as much training as apparently those assassins. Um, <laughs> where I, a bit like um, with Huey in the boys on the uh, in season one, mm-hmm. where he's just trying to fire a machine gun and screaming as he fires <laughs> it. I presume all the assassins were kind of just going, "Where have we been pulled to?" Ah! Exactly. <laughs> and firing away uh, and missing all their marks. Well, I think you're right. Yeah, it's the op- operatives from the commission, isn't it? Yeah, so not all of them will be assassins. Some of them are just changing little things. <laughs> Could you imagine being a cleaner and sort of mopping the, 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 the male toilets or something, cleaning them up? And all of a sudden, you're in the middle of a field in Texas uh, with, with and your mop's been changed for a gun, and it's like... Mm-hmm. Uh oh! <laughs> right, and now they're point and click, absolutely, boys. and now they're all dead from, from small back. print of my contract. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Chris, do you want to take our final piece of feedback for Umbrella Academy season two? Yes. Over on Twitter at TV Pod Industries, Will B sent his thoughts on the finale, and he had this to say. So, two points on the finale. Good call-out in the poor skills of thousands of assassins, on top of them all shooting over each other's shoulders without friendly fire. <laughs> oh my god, true. yeah, Actually, absolutely. Yeah, like, to be fair, like, they were all, like, there was wave upon <laughs> waves of them. So it's like, hey, we're going to shoot up and over? No, I'm thinking, that's actually probably why. The first row <laughs> just was actually shooting at them. The rest were all shooting at, like, a 45 degree angle uh-huh. constantly. There you go. You see, it always pays to sit on the back row in class. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Exactly. Uh, finally, uh, also with Lila's powers, is she immune to the other's powers as well? Hmm. That was unclear to me. So I don't think she's immune. Yeah. I think because she replicates, she's able to kind of not negate because she was, say, if we look back at, uh, Alison's. Yeah, rumor, exactly. She gets rumored. L- Lila is rumored for a second, but she rumors back before. Yeah. So it's kind of before the rumor can be complete, she rumors Alison. I wonder if that that's the one that I think maybe Will be is is referencing there because it it was I I thought well because Alison got in there first that it would trump even if she was mirroring it back because mm-hmm. she would finish the the I heard a rumor before um, but it seemed like she was able to take in the words and you, and that's where you see her eyes. And then almost push them back out towards exactly. Allison, yeah. which I suppose is um, it's not so though it, it looks like immunity, but it's actually kind of projecting back the 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 I heard a rumor back onto Allison. But- Absolutely, I think you've you've chosen exactly the right word there, John. She's mirroring their powers, so she doesn't actually say the words herself. She doesn't say. 
I heard a rumor. Alison starts the sentence, I heard a rumor, and she finishes it back at Alison. Yeah, so exactly. she is reflecting the powers back at them. So it's not that she's immune. She's highly trained, as we saw with the, with the, with the training montage, uh, with the handler, uh, earlier on in the season. Um, she's highly trained anyway. So now that she has the power, she's able to use them in really good fighting positions. So we have that with Luther. She's not immune to him being super powerful. She's just able to stop him because she's exactly as powerful as he is. So he has no way of beating her unless he has better strategy. And we know she's really got really good strategy. So, yeah. uh, so that, that's what I thought was really cool. She's a mimic, essentially. Kind of, yeah. I think mirror is definitely the right word. You're the mimic, Chris. Uh, <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> she's, just, she's able to have exactly the same powers of them and push them back at uh, our, our main team, I think, is what we see. I think we're going to need to see more in uh, season three. I think I, that will be the overall definitely. Um, yeah, uh, it, it, they need it's they need to make a decision if it's either mimicry. So she so basically, do you remember Morph in the X Men, the animated cartoon? <laughs> Essentially, he could mimic anyone else's power. He was in he was around. Yeah. The difference with that is if you're a mimic or you're a mirror. If you're a mimic and there's hundreds like there's there's the Umbrella Academy around you, you can mimic all of their powers. Mm-hmm. But if you're mirroring, she can only mirror one at a time, whoever she's facing and doing and things like that. See what I mean? Yeah. Unless she's in a house of mirrors. If you think of a house of mirrors, <laughs> then actually true. she could. It's just how a single person does that. But well, yeah, that was that was that'd be awesome that she kind of splits into multiple into pieces. Yeah, Ooh. that was the proposal, wasn't it, from the Umbrella Academy that they didn't know whether she could mimic each of their powers uh, separately or all of their powers at the same time. So they were going to overwhelm her by yeah. surrounding her. That was their, that was their plan. So, but you're right. We didn't, we only got to see this as the big reveal in the final episode. So hopefully once again, if there is a season three, hopefully nope, don't we'll go there see yet. more don't of go her. There yet. We do not go there yet. We will talk about that sad, sad thing later. We will. We Keep will. it upbeat. <laughs> Absolutely. Thanks once again to all of our wonderful Academy alumni for their feedback. Thank you so much for sending it in. Sorry we couldn't read all about it uh, as we went through the episodes. You guys sent in some wonderful thoughts, and I think I replied to everybody. Uh, if we didn't include your, your messages this time, keep sending us in feedback to feedback at tvpodcastindustries.com about any of the shows that we're covering in future, and we'll discuss them on those episodes. Yeah, thanks. So, yeah, thanks so much uh, to everyone for all the the feedback and thoughts. Really, really good stuff. Yeah, and if you literally want to call out how great I am in predicting stuff, feel free to tag me in the Facebook group because then <laughs> I'll actually see it. Um, more so Derek well, usually responds. So I do go in. <laughs> I am that lurker on social media. I see all but do nothing. I'm that kind of lazy managerial boss, middle level management, if you want to call oh, it that. Oh, um, <laughs> Yeah, I'm that kind of guy. If you want to point out the one thing that Chris gets right on the next season we cover, <laughs> please do. <you know, laughs> it's always yeah. one and done. Hey, yeah, hey, the well, next 500 I'm... episodes. Oh, true. Exactly. Yes, true. Thank you so much. Absolutely, yes. We have been doing one other thing throughout the season. Uh, we have also been doing our pub pop quiz, as John has been giving out a question each episode of the show, and you all have been sending in your answers throughout the season, all in different ways, individual ones after each episode, or an email with five questions answered in it, or the whole ten. We've got loads of people in for our chance to win some Umbrella Academy goodies. John, do you want to take it away and tell them what they actually we're entering for because we didn't tell them all season <laughs> yeah fellow brolly dollies uh who have uh sent in their answers to the pub quiz questions thank you so so much um yes the prizes here were the making of an umbrella academy book there is also an umbrella academy mug uh and we were looking for an umbrella if we can find it but unfortunately, we seem to have lost where we saw it. So there may also be uh, an umbrella for the Umbrella Academy. Uh, and as well, there is a Umbrella Academy T-shirt yes. uh, also. So there's a great range of prizes here. Weirdly, it was really difficult to source them because Netflix and even Dark Horse Comics don't really have a merchandise or a great deal of merchandise around for uh, the Umbrella Academy. So there's loads of little bits. There's, there's like loads the of little bits, but not. It's mainly just the comics. But I'm um, sorry. What so, the yeah. hell is wrong with you, Netflix? If you can't put out an Umbrella <laughs> Academy branded umbrella, like <laughs> why is that not possible? Uh, even Dark Horse, you know these these things cost about ten quid to, to get the umbrella. Slap on the logo, sell it for twenty five quid. Bob's your uncle, Fanny's your aunt, right? So yeah, something <laughs> like that. Um. 
But so they are the prizes. Thank you so much, as I said, to everyone who who's come in with the answers. It really was a high standard mm -hmm. uh, this time, uh, to the point where we have um, four a top four all on a tie, mm -hmm. um, for sure. So um, I think I'm going to probably have to uh, up the difficulty level uh, of these pub questions <laughs> in the future. <laughs> Please don't. Uh, we're moving to level right. two, and I'll have to uh -huh. gag Derek as well okay. from providing hints and clues along the way. Oh, I'm sorry. But let's get to the answers of our pub quiz questions. Mm -hmm. For question one, what book did Alison's husband Ray buy her for their anniversary as a gift? It was the book From the Earth to the Moon by Jules Verne. You know, there's a, one of the wonderful things I love about your questions is you don't know when you ask the question how important things are going to be. And that's the book that was shown right at the end of the season. It was a really important book to the two of yeah, them. Like, exactly. Exactly. Like, what a guess uh, from my side. Exactly. Uh, for question two, what quote does Raymond Chestnut correct Klaus on as they do time together in jail? And sh and which Shakespeare play is it from? It is the quote of from King Henry the Fourth, Part Two. Uneasy lies the head that wears the crown. Nice. Yes. So why is that always misquoted? It's one of these weird ones that I'm like. I, it was beaten into me in English class back in, I don't even remember when. Mm -hmm. And I'm just wondering, has it, is it, be, the, the misquoting of it becomes so prolific. Yeah. Possibly. That it's yeah. just now kind of heavy as the hair, head that wears the crown. Like, no, that's never been what it was. Exactly. Yeah. I don't know. I think it's just that I'm a literary nerd sometimes and I'm just <laughs> like, grr. Hey, Chris, you know, that, that quote has been around for centuries. They still can't get the fact that in, Star Trek, there was never a beam me up Scotty moment, and that's available on video. <laughs> so, so anybody can watch the actual clips where he never, where it was never said. So they quotes, quotes are always misquoted. They I wonder as well push. if it's the passage of time and going through ye olde English, uh, Tudory <laughs> stuff into kind of sort of modern, uh, modern English. But maybe, maybe. yeah. Anyway, question three. What uh, is the name of the pet store that the handler visits to leave a message in the fish tank? Mm -hmm. It is W. Arnold Pet Store. Yes. Uh, that is the name. Yes. And where she uh, does a little bit of um, child frightening uh, yeah. along the way. Uh, mop up in the goldfish aisle, <laughs> uh, I suppose Mr. W. Arnold said uh, that day. Um or at least he thought one of the dogs that had come in um, or was sold that day had left him oh, a yeah. little a little gift, gift on his way out. Question four. What do Luther and Elliot share together back at Morty's? Yes, it is nitrous or nitrous oxide mm -hmm. um, for sure. Yep. Uh, I think Bob Phillips did indicate that the... The apparatus for uh, inhaling that uh, has moved on since. I think you bite down on it now so that if you OD, you will release that grip uh, and no longer uh, get any more uh, nitrous oxide love being it. pumped into your lungs uh, and throughout your body. All the facts, I Bob. love that we have a doctor listening to us again, <laughs> <can't> actually. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Dr. Bob. Because nice. I was like... Oh, yeah, that makes more sense. It does, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And speaking of um, <laughs> doctors and surgeons, mm. question five was, what game was Holland playing on the dining table? It was that anatomically correct game board called Operation. Atomically yes. incorrect, Sean. Incorrect. No, that's what everyone's heart looks like. <laughs> um, yes, and the bones as yeah, well. Doctor's not fan of that game either. <laughs> well it was operation mm -hmm. uh i do remember it as a kid um that's yeah. why i now think my why are my eyes on my face and not in my feet okay anyway <laughs> moving on question six when and where will the board of the commission meet it was the lonely lodge in oshkosh wisconsin what in year, 1982 chris two, two. 1982 <laughs> Why? Was I just constantly saying it wrong? 1983. Um, yep, yeah, 1983. For some reason, you had it in your head. That's where they were getting to. <laughs> oh my God, why? 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 What happened in 1983, people? No idea. Correct me. Were, were you correct born? Correct me if I was... No. I, I, am, I am a lot younger than that. Not by much, but a lot. <laughs> <laughs> were you born in 1983? No. Okay, grants. <laughs> no. On to question seven, I think. What... Is the other convention taking place at the Lonely 
in. Mm -hmm. It was the Wisconsin Polka Association uh, and their convention. So, so yeah, apart from the uh, the man who's who's screaming uh, alongside the homeless man in the first episode, who's screaming alongside Aletha, these are my favorite other background characters from the season. The Polka convention who sees the, the horrible devastation that Five does when he kills everybody <laughs> and then just close the door it's and the, go back to the two the, ladies that yeah. say, I think we'll stay in here. Hilarious. Good choice, yeah. ladies, Excellent. indeed. Question eight. Where in the commission handbook can you find the seven stages of paradox psychosis? And what are they? Mm. It is chapter 27, subsection 3B. Yes. The stage one, denial. Stage two, itching. Stage three, extreme thirst and urination. My particular favorite, stage four, excessive gas. Stage five, acute paranoia. Stage six, uncontrolled perspiration and finally stage seven homicidal rage <laughs> brilliant brilliant you say uh no so hulk is absolutely in the deep throes of um stage seven of uh, the paradox psychosis when he turns into his greeny weeny monster absolutely he's less homicidal just more rage it is more rage. Yeah. Yeah. He's angry all the time yeah. but throwing cars at people and tanks is surely going to kill people True. I know okay. the comics don't show that. Collateral damage is a thing. Well, if we go into the Ultimates, the Ultimates universe was really good at showing the collateral damage part. Mm -hmm. Anyway, this is not a Marvel Ultimates No, podcast. it's not. No. No, it's not. <laughs> Moving on. Yes, question nine. What building is Vanya being held in in Dallas? It was the FBI building there in Dallas. Mm -hmm. Yes. And finally, question ten. When... And at what time does training resume at the Umbrella Academy after Ben's funeral? It was as, quote, Sir Reggie, tomorrow at 6 a.m., mm -hmm. the next day. Yes, yes, we would accept the next day as well. Yes. I don't accept that. No, I don't. Like, of course, I have no power in this whatsoever, but yeah, anyway. That's it. Those are the questions and answers for our pub quiz for Umbrella Academy Season 2. While John puts together the tops of our uh, of our leaderboard for the uh, pub quiz and the wearers of the goodies, I'm going to read out a couple of the answers that we got in for some additional questions that John asked, just for a bit of fun, uh, throughout the season. John yeah. asked a bonus question. Uh, what was the medical procedure that the Swedes performed on poor Elliot? Um, first up, Dr. Bob Phillips said uh, a sort of molar extraction of her right and while not dental, looked like an attempted transglobular extraction of the left <laughs> optic nerve. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Bob. Mm. It certainly did. Yeah. Also, Sci-Fi Sarah said, offered uh, an alternative uh, for the medical procedure. She says a Swedish tooth extraction courtesy of the commission administer numbing medication with fists, make patient comfortable in chair, hold down. Apply mouth prop, i.e. fingers, remove tooth using dental forceps, place various dental tooth tools in face and chest. <laughs> Procedure is complete. <laughs> I, I think that's why I hate the dentist so much, because that's how I feel it will end up, is that the dentist will just go, oh, screw this guy, and just like, I don't know, put the drill into my chest oh, or something. Oh my god, you need to stop screaming at the dentist, I think, John. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think they don't like you just for that reason. They, oh, gi also, they yeah. give me teddies, I think. I think they need to. Oh I hate dentists. Yeah, well, I'll just pay the bills, and maybe they won't attack you next yeah, time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right, so... He makes the world go around, the world go around. <laughs> yes, so we have a top four. Ooh, really? Yes, and in fact, it's a joint first place here. Um, or with uh, a 10 out of 10, full marks, mm -hmm. uh, A star, um, you know, top of the class, you name it, SWATs galore here. Okay. Uh, really good, very strong um, uh, responses from everyone that came in. But this, these were the top four um, that got 10 out of 10. Like normally we would do our bronze, silver, gold, yeah. uh, but because they all got top marks, we have four in the mix here. Uh, that was a Bob Phillips, Jeff Childs, Sci-Fi Sarah, and James Uren. Well um, done, guys. Yeah. Well done. That's really good. Whoop, whoop. So, uh, well done to you. I kind of love when that happens. You know, we, we've had a, a bunch of them that we've had just one person that has had one question better, one question right. Uh, more than everybody else and sometimes i really like what everybody's uh, when everybody's got them right so that's kind of fun exactly so here we go okay 
That is uh, John trying to uh, roll a load of pieces of paper in that big ball that looks like kind of the bingo hall or raffle, depending on where you yes. are. Yes, <laughs> it is the ultimate randomizer. So, yeah. Derek. And now we have Derek. Uh, he is placing his hand into the giant ball. And yes, he has removed a piece of paper. It is all in now. He is opening the piece of paper and he is about to read it and he's going to say... And the winner of the goodies for Umbrella Academy Season 2 is Jeff Childs. Well done, Jeff. Yeah, well done, Jeff. Well done, indeed. That's fab. That's really cool. I know Jeff is a massive Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. fan, so I know he's been a little bit down since Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. finished as well. So hopefully some prizes from Umbrella Academy Season 2 might cheer you up. Yeah, well done, Jeff. And also well done to everyone who submitted um, their answers in. And in mm-hmm. particular, to the finalists, uh, Bob, Jeff, uh, Sci-Fi Sarah, and James. Really good to get your answers in. And also for the the two people that provided the bonus answer to the bonus question, mm-hmm. uh, there will be a little um, umbrella Prezi on its way as well. Are you just sending them an umbrella, John? Is that... No. <laughs> okay. You're this the no the for for taking the time yeah. for uh, trying to sort out exactly what the Swedes did to poor poor Elliot mm-hmm. um, and, and doing it with um, a plum and also with uh, some fun here, uh, as well as quite a lot of uh, medical. Uh, terms like trans and globular i suppose and um, then uh definitely uh, a big thanks for the bonus question okay. participants right let's uh, let's get that clear at the end so jeff charles wins our goodies that we mentioned up front the uh, making of umbrella academy book uh the umbrella academy t-shirt umbrella academy mug and if we can find an umbrella, uh, you will also get that in your We did pack. see it. Did it see is it. the elusive Umbrella Academy umbrella. It's somewhere. It's somewhere. And also, Dr. Bob Phillips and Sci-Fi Sarah, you'll be getting a little special gift for making us laugh with your medical procedure yes. that the Swedes performed on poor Elliot, because that didn't make me laugh. That made me kind of cry. Well, it, it did make me cry as well, because yeah. Elliot was, was fun. And it is not a 50 euro gift voucher to your local dentist no absolutely not absolutely not it might be a an umbrella that you might put into a drink uh, that, might, that might be what you get but <laughs> cocktail uh, umbrella cocktail umbrella that's the excellent <laughs> that's it for our pub quiz uh last yep. final thoughts on umbrella academy season two guys uh, we have uh, talked a lot about it throughout the season so uh, i don't think we're going to talk too much more about the show because we've had some great feedback detailing all of your thoughts we've talked about the show uh, backwards and forwards uh this time throughout the season um chris overall uh anything you want to f- uh, want to talk about as we get to the end of our coverage of umbrella academy season two um it's just uh i i really enjoyed the show for me right now it's the the elusive question of will we get a season three um i am i'm hopeful but unfortunately the real reality of where we are right now, mm. um, I, I, I'm, I'm pessimistic in terms of will we. Um, I was recently they uh, Netflix have cancelled uh, um, Altered Carbon. That's right, yeah. Uh, which was going into its third season, which mm-hmm. had apparently very good numbers. Uh, whose lead was Anthony Mackie, who yep. is on Disney Books, who is um, is about to blow up again. Yeah. Um, and if it was, uh, uh, if it was just because it was Anthony Mackie being too expensive, well, the whole premise of Altered Carbon is you can jump into different bodies. So you can replace that actor True. very easily. I also say that they made a cartoon out of this, like mm-hmm. a proper animated film, which is a lot of big investment as well. And they have canceled that series. Yeah. So that is quite a strange one. Well, they have they have spent a lot of money on movies this year, particularly. Um, they bought a lot of movies that would have been in the cinema this year. And yeah. It feels like they kind of moved their investment over to other areas, especially the knowledge that you know they don't know how filming is going to go for any of these shows in the future. That's Nobody knows. Thing. Some things have yeah. gone back. Some things that have a lot of science fiction elements, where people are normally being filmed on their own with blue screens or green screens behind them. That stuff is really easy to film in this new post-COVID world, whenever that happens. Um, But 
intimate moments when characters are side by side together all the time, that stuff's going to have to be managed really differently, uh, especially yeah. if they want to start filming soon. You know, you see it with with uh, the sports events that have gone back where people are effectively sequestered for months on end so they can play sports every week. Well, you can't have actors doing that either. You know, when you've got hundreds of people in the crew and the cast all involved in big TV shows with huge budgets. Well, you can't sequester 200 people just to make a TV show for four, four or five months. So don't exactly. really know how this is going to work. Yeah. And that kind of where we, it leads into. So I, I'm previously in the next two to three weeks, or at least in the next two months, we potentially would have got some announcement to say, Hey, we're renewing it for season three. We haven't got that yet. I don't think we will get that for. A while. They may cancel it next year, but I think what we'll end up getting is just this question, a large question mark. Well, they figure it out themselves. Yeah. Essentially, they, there is the option of, Hey, can we rework the whole script and premise of season three to be in terms of a production very small, i.e., uh, more single one on ones, more smaller rooms, things like that versus big outdoor spaces and sequestering. Yeah. Like, can they change some of that? Which I don't think they'll try. So I think what they'll end up doing is, okay, we're going to hold off. We're not going to announce anything until maybe this time next year. Mm -hmm. So I think whatever thing, it will be an announcement next year. And if anything, then if it's a yes, then it will be at least, we're at least 24 months away from or just under 24 months from a season three maybe i yeah. think that is the reality of the thing yeah. do i want it god i want it because the sparrow academy it's all the the building blocks are there the growth of the characters is there yeah. everything is set up for being season three being potentially even better than season season two because we and the characters the actors know their characters all the wheels are in motion uh, well, all they've got all the pieces to make a third season. If they if they get the call from Netflix to say a third season is a go, absolutely. They I think they're all uh, they've got all the pieces. Yeah, every everything's yeah. there. Uh, someone pointed out quite recently. I think I might have been Pake over on uh, over on Strange Indeed podcast about Umbrella Academy. Uh, they pointed out that the comic books Umbrella Academy Volume Three Hotel Oblivion uh, was ten years from when the first Umbrella Academy comic was written. So there was a massive gap between volume two and volume three. I mentioned that that was only released in 2016, I think 2017. Uh, and I mentioned that it ends with exactly the same cliffhanger as, uh, as season two of the Umbrella Academy does as well. So, um, or a very similar type of cliffhanger, let's say, and that hasn't been resolved. So I think I'd mentioned that if the show finishes that way, uh, it will be pretty much the same as Umbrella Academy fans uh, have finished with this big cliffhanger. I don't want it to happen. I want to see more. I love these actors really loved season two of the show. Um, but they could end it there or they could continue on the story in a few years' time because TV is so different now. It doesn't have to be you start off on uh, October 1st with uh, season one and then October 1st the next year you have season two and then October 1st the year after that you have season three. That's not the way TV works now. You Things are becoming more event-like, like movies. There's two or three-year gaps between TV shows. It's, yep. not, it's just not the same way. But with everything that's going on in the world, with COVID, with uh, so much happening... Um, really can can think that this is definitely not going to be something we're going to see next summer by any means they certainly yeah. haven't started any kind of filming uh since they finished the filming on the show but um i would hope it's been number one i think f um certainly on the tv side tv shows yeah. on netflix it's been on their number one around the world for weeks on end so um so i, I would expect that if that's what they're looking at umbrella academy is a shoe in for season three if filming does continue yeah definitely i i, I think um netflix would be a little crazy not to uh, schedule a third season. Um, and, you know, with Game of Thrones, where I suppose the, the TV show outpaces the source material, yeah. then certainly, you know, so long as everyone's willing that that happens, then, um, yeah, I think uh, season three would be awesome. I mean, I, I really want to connect back in with these characters uh, as soon as possible because overall I just love this season. It's been a long time where I've really wanted to binge a show. Uh, I could quite easily have gone the, the full 10 episodes in a Umbrella Academy weekend really? uh, for sure yeah. because it made me laugh, it made me think, um, it made me um, 
Scream in Terror. I loved the characters. Um, I loved how their development in, in this season. I, I liked the themes on it. Um, I, I just thought it, it, you know, it got into a few more of the nooks and crannies of this world, sure. whether it was with Sir Reggie and Pogo and, um, and also with, with, with Vanya, with these fireflies, um, uh, and with the handler, uh, with, through Leela and, uh, really just nicely done. And of course, having not read the comics, I suppose that's really uh good to get that additional sort of uh world building um with these two and i i love the the ending i love the fact this sparrow academy and i really want to find out about that and so yeah i i thought this was a great great season yep yeah yeah i totally agree with you john i think the 60s setting for this show really set this apart from season one i've said it before i liked season one it was fine it was grand some great fun performances and great fun moments but this season overall hung together so much better one of the things i've been listening to recently is the official podcast from uh from netflix uh really well produced uh interview podcast with the cast and crew creators behind it Uh, and jared way's been on there the creator of the comic books um he's talking about uh steve blackman's show very much as it's his show yeah okay the characters are from my comic books but it's very much blackman's show it's what he's producing for netflix if there was a third season blackman could just go ahead and make it based on the characters he's created on the show he doesn't really need to wait for material from uh jared way i really will have to say and i know a lot of our listeners haven't actually read the comic books this really doesn't feel like it's based on storyline from the comic books starting at issue one ending at issue whatever it is 28 or 35 or whatever whatever the, whatever it gets to uh this really feels like they took inspiration from some of the stories and turned it into much more of the a dramatic tv show that works on netflix because the comic does go a bit off the rails and, and off the wall in a lot of places that just wouldn't work for the type of show they've done here on netflix i'd say yeah so uh, i think since the podcast has um, been recorded uh, Gabriel uh, Wa and uh, Jared Way have said that um, they have spoken to Blackman and actually have given him where they believe their comics were going to be are going to be headed oh, to cool. give him just so that like as it it's the inspiration so like basically there'll yeah. be sometimes there's the like maybe some of the cool things might might cross over but it's as you said john it's going to be that game of thronesy yeah the uh the tv show hopefully or may or may not over outpace the book depending on when it's picked up next season mm-hmm. but gentlemen cool. on that i think we're at the end of our Umbrella Academy coverage. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. That's been a wonderful season of Umbrella Academy. Really, really has, yeah. It. yeah. And thank you all so much for joining us throughout this season. We hope you stay subscribed to the podcast. As we mentioned, loads more stuff that we're doing over at tvpodcastindustries.com. And if you enjoy what you hear, why not share it with your friends? Sharing the podcast is sharing the love. Later on this week, we're kicking off our boys coverage. The boys season two coming back to Amazon Prime with the first three episodes being released on the 4th of September. And then one episode a week, every week from then on. As we mentioned before, myself and John are also in the darkness of Lovecraft Country with new episodes coming out every Monday uh, talking about that season of the scary ass show on HBO. Yes, scary as hell um, is Lovecraft Country Uh um, in many, many different forms. Uh, Yet can't wait to get into The Boys Season 2 for um, just pure, unadulterated um, violence and yeah a lot of swearing as well oh, so i cannot wait for the boys season two with its irreverence coming back in full full force mm-hmm. so yeah can't wait for that lots of blood lots of guts lots of violence lots of cursing love it yes in the immortal words of billy butcher from the boys see you soon <coughs> see i can't i can't even do a cut there because <laughs> we have to close out properly but yes thank you so much for joining us from Umbrella academy we do hope you'll join us for season two of The Boys. Trust us, it will be a rollicking good ride. Don't forget, also head over to patreon.com slash TV Podcast Industries and support us there if you can. And we forever grateful you have provided the support to help keep the lights on the podcast running and even get my dulcet tones even worse with this new fancy new mic. I can even do ASMR if you really want. Oh, don't, but, Chris. Please yeah, don't. no. <laughs> 
Yes, thank you so much for joining us, fellow Broly Dollies, and of course, fellow Academicals. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's great having you here for Season 2 of the Umbrella Academy, and your thoughts and your little lug holes as well, listening in to our podcast here over on TV Podcast Industries. And of course, as always, it has been a pleasure speaking with you. But remember, even more importantly, keep watching, keep listening, and keep studying. That's the one. Bye. There you go. Bye. Bye. <laughs>